Hello, everyone, and welcome to a episode of Nikki Plays. And today, we're going to be adding to our playthroughs of... Well, I only have one playthrough going on right now, which is Rebel Galaxy, which is going to pick up very soon because I want to stream the next episode. But this is No Man's Sky. We've been here before. I'm going to try to do a speed run kind of sort of in survival. And I, I just i have been dying to get back into this game, especially now that they have this brand new updated, incredibly awesome update. Oh, see, I said update twice. Um, called Beyond. So let's see what we have in Beyond. Now, if you ask me why I play something as ridiculous as uh, survival, it's because uh, I, I like there to be a feeling of accomplishment in the game when I play. I already know where I'm going. I'm going to the right. I saw some sodium over there. So we're going to go get that sodium right over. Come on, let me go, let me go. Okay, I know what we're going to do. Immediately, I hate this view. So we're going to go to this view over here, and then we're going to go look at that sodium that looked like it was over here. Nope, that's Cave Morrow. Oh, God. We're starting off... We're starting off behind... Please tell me one of these is going to be sodium. Oh, it is. Good. So we're going to get some sodium. We've got a whopping 10. We need to go in that cave. And we're going... This is going to be cobalt. Cobalt and ferrite dust could make us batteries that could get us past things. But... If you get if you spawn right near a cave, it's a good idea to go in because you'll find sodium along the walls most of the time, and you'll find oxygen. Two things that you're gonna need to begin your trek to go find your ship. So I say this is the best start that you can have is within a short distance of a cave. Run into the cave. I heard some over here somewhere. I hear the hiss. I'm right on top of it. And we're going to have enough... Oh, God. They gave us a lot over here. What I'm not going to have a lot of is carbon. So we're going to want to keep that carbon um, in check up there. We're down to 27%. But we have tons and tons of this stuff. So by the time we're done here, we should have more than enough sodium to live through the next few minutes on this planet. Anymore. I'm not done here. But down to 19%. We gotta keep an eye on that. I would say we're probably done in just a second. And then the first couple things that we have to get are gonna be carbon. I would say we probably have over a hundred sodium by now. Let's take a look at that and see where we're at in sodium. 126. I, I would say that's a good start. Alright, so we need carbon, so we need to find plant life. Alright, so this is an ugly planet. That's carbon. And we'll get enough to do two things. All we need is a little bit, because... Well, here's one that's closer. We'll go to the closer one. That's all we needed. Oh, wow, there's two. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. And there we go. We've got some carbon. And you don't have to worry about much when you first start. There's just a couple of things that you have to worry about. And that's finding your ship. And getting enough of the materials to get your ship fixed. So ferrite dust and carbon are going to be the first two things that you need to rebuild the pieces that you have to rebuild. And we're going to keep this going. Looks like we had ferrite dust over here. We do. We have carbon right behind it. And run that up a little bit. Alright, so why have I been doing this? Um, Basically, I need to make a couple of things here. I need to make this. 
And my multi-tool is going to get a addition of a visor. Alright, that way I could at least see things. And ferrite dust, we need a bunch more. Okay. So now we could at least scan some things. We could look in the direction of our ship. So we could actually start walking in the direction of our ship and we'll be fine. Our ship is in what direction? Our ship is in this direction. So analyze and walk at the same time. So our ship should be over that ridge in front of us. And we should be able to get our multi-tool completely fixed by then. Because it's the scanner that we need to fix. It's pure ferrite. We'll get most of these scanned before we leave this planet. Alright, so let's take a look at fixing that multi-tool at this point. And we can get it done, and that means that we could scan up ahead and see what we have. Our main idea here is to get off this rock as quickly as possible. But it's also to make sure that on the way back we collect enough of the materials to start the repair of our ship. So we can get off this rock as quickly as possible. That That's the big thing. Starting your playthrough in... No Man's Sky is the same every time. Uh, well, the same steps every time. You're on a different planet every time. So it's going to be cold, caustic, boiling, hot. It's going to be radioactive. It's going to be some kind of bad, bad, bad environment that you have to deal with. And then after you get off this rock, or your initial rock, you're going to be sent to another one that's going to have a totally different bad environment normally. And what I've been finding a lot lately is that they're actually mixing in something that they didn't used to, and that's the Predators. There's a very good chance that by the time you get to your second planet, that you're going to be dealing with Predators. And that I've seen in a couple of my playthrough starts lately. Pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that they did a great job at um, rebuilding this game, making it better over time. I wish more games would be made this way, where you can buy it and then have them do tons of upgrades to it. Um, please, Bethesda, listen to that when you're thinking about Fallout 76. And then over time, something that was not released very good becomes a excellent game. And I would say that this game has gone from bad to okay to great. It's not my favorite game in the world that will still be Star Citizen, even though that's not a completed game right now. Um, but it will be a completed game at some point. I believe in them. I have to. They're friends of mine. <laughs> Alright, we can get this. Alright, we're just going to keep on looking at things. Now we're going to need... Pure ferrite, a hermetic seal, a metal plate, and we're going to need uh, pure, yeah, pure ferrite, metal plate, hermetic seal, and a dihydrogen jelly. That's going to be everything that we need to get the ship fixed. And that's going to be something that we'll be able to do rather quickly. I just want to get there. It's good when you can get something that has two things in it. Like carbon and metal and a rock. That's good. This stuff is going to be very important for getting off of here. But I think that we have pretty much everything that we need. And we could probably run towards our ship as soon as we get the last of these crystals. These crystals could also help us with ox oxygen in a little bit. But that's our ship right there. And look at that. They give us some sodium right along the way. So we should be fine. Alright, we're coming down this hill. And I'm going to expedite it. Oh, oh. That was not good. Oh, I didn't think I was going to take damage on that fall. 
We just have to be careful for the next few seconds and then we'll be all right. We don't want to lose any more. We don't want to lose any more health because we'll be dead if we do. All right, we're back home. Our ship is right there. We're going to go to our ship. We should make it before anything negative happens to us. We are going to have to recharge our health a little bit. We have two of our little health things down. Hopefully along the way they give us something. All right, so we have a couple of things here saying that this is kind of a Jason Bourne-esque thing that happens to you. You wake up, you don't know who you are, where you are, and you know that you are obviously from space because you have a spacesuit on and you're on a caustic planet and you're trying to find your way off so you're looking for your ship you finally get to your ship and it's got broken takeoff thrusters and broken pulse engine and you can't go anywhere so the first thing that you have to do is figure out how to fix it and those are the things that we have to figure out here now uh i'm just going to do something just for the poops and giggles in the beginning just because spots are important up front later on this is probably not the way that I'm gonna have things situated but I want all my spots open for different things okay so we're gonna need dihydrogen jelly a metal plate um, we also have this stuff and that should give us enough of something Right, it gave us a lot of dihydrogen, which went in there. We'll just put it all over here. That's good. All right, ferrite dust. We want that to go over here. All right, good. And I'm going to make a metal plate. You'll see why in a couple of seconds. That metal plate is going to be for the starship. So let's look at the things that we have to fix. We're going to put dihydrogen jelly there. And then we're going to put the metal plate there. All right, it's going to come back. We're going to get out of the ship, get back in, and the quest will go on. But in the meantime, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to put this out here, and I'm going to start making my pure ferrite. All right, and that will be pure ferrite that will fix the rest of my launch thrusters, I believe. All right, so we come back in, and it tells us that we're going to need help to find a hermetic seal. We're going to request assistance, and it's going to send us over here. Okay, so it tells us, comes and gives us a specific thing that we have to make sure we're doing on this playthrough. And that specific, specific task is to come over here and just click on this and see what happens. And essentially it's more of a message. It's gonna tell us that we're um, fresh iteration generated, anomaly containment prepared, broadcast. It sounds like we're a clone. That's what it sounds like. Broadcast received, traveler anomaly detected. Anomaly is compliant, position log, system integrity, scan initialized, the red light fills my vision, all I see is crimson, then it fades the color. And look, color, C-O-L-O-U-R, British game, right? Drains, and all the worlds that had seemed so clear seemed to slip away. Appear inside the beacon's housing, as well as its distress broadcast unit, it contains a planetary chart. Now, one of the quality of life upgrades, you used to have to build something right now, something called a signal booster. Now, they're still going to be important later on, but now we're going to get this geode. Yeah, let's get that cobalt into our exosuit. And that is our exosuit. How about that? It's over here. And you only have to take this planetary coordinates and just click on it. And it will point you in a direction. Okay, we're going in that direction over there. It's usually about a click away and about a quarter of the way along your path. It's going to spawn. It's going to spawn a storm that's going to try to kill you. So they're going to try to kill you the whole way that you're walking there, but we're going to get over it because they also sporadically put things like sodium along the way and boxes to look through. We still have boxes back there to look through, but 
We'll do that when we come back. Right now, like I said, I'm trying to do a speed run. Now I'm going to walk towards the co condensed carbon because that's an important thing for us to get. We're going to need that along the way. And you're going to see me take some liberties here that some people might not always take. All right. Let's get everything done. I'm going to stop for a second as I do something that's extremely important in my life, and that's to text my daughter and say I love her this morning. I just had to pick her up at the airport last night. You can see all of that. Now, I'm not worried about thermal protection right now. Because no matter what we do, the storm warning is going to come. And I'm pretty happy about all the condensed items that we're finding. Yeah, you are dying if I have to kill you myself. Any of these plants that do things that are going to harm you, I, I, I just eradicate. You can see the temperature going up. Um, we are in full-on storm right now. And I am not going to worry about this because I just want to get myself ahead of it a little bit. And make sure I have enough oxygen. Because we're about ready to start running. And the way you run in this game is you hold down the shift key. Then hit the Q key and then just fly above the ground for a bit. That's the best way to run. Now this is going to keep us walking in the right direction. And we're going to want to stay ahead of that because we only have one health left. All right, good. We got that. And usually, you're going to have one of two things happen. You're either going to find a cave along the way and you could duck inside of it. I didn't do it right. You got to do that right, which you'll see how to do that in a little bit. It's actually... And you want to stay as close to the ground as you can get. Because you don't want to fall and hurt yourself like I did before. That's our last 29. And that's where we're going to. So we made it. So the good news is, making it means that we're going to have... have no problem with uh, getting our thermal protection fixed. We made it inside. Good. Um, there is nothing in this one except for a word. Oh no, we're going to get funds from this. Funds transferred. Now we should have a couple of thousand funds because we've been scanning things as we've gone along. Things seem to be okay. We're out of sodium now, but we'll find some on the way back because on the way back, we should have full thermal protection. Reset. Now these always want stuff that you don't have. Like right now it wants sodium nitrate and the possibility of me having sodium nitrate this early in the game is not good. Alright, so we're going to come over here to this hollow archive, click on it, and it's going to be more of the story. Essentially someone leaving you messages that they don't know they're leaving you messages, they're just leaving it into the space. Essentially saying they're lost and all sorts of things went wrong. Their visor's not working, the ship is broken, and they needed to make this part. It just so happens to be the part that we need, which is a one in a trillion, if you think about it, that a person is stranded here. Oh, these are phenomenal. Well, you want the ones that say gold. These are all uranium. These are all uranium. We could look at them. That one's gold. These are phenomenal. You can sit out here and get these. They take forever to get to. So you want to play with the overheat mechanic that you have in with your mining laser. So you bring it all the way up. Watch the bar go up. And then just back off. And you can get through something rather quick. And gold I want for two reasons. A, I want to be attacked when we finally go into the air, go, go up into space. Second thing is, 
if possible, and we get on a planet that has good stuff, we want to build better power, which needs gold when we get there. Um, the next planet that you go on, you're going to have to build some things. We're going to go back in, get ourselves situated. All right. All right. Let's get this set up again. Let's get our oxygen set back up again. And let's, let's go. Now, we, we have oxygen over here. We're going to go towards the oxygen first. There is the hydrocarbon over here. Well, it's not hydrocarbon. It's dihydrogen. I don't know why I call it hydrocarbon. It's obviously just crystallized hydrogen on the ground, which I didn't know could happen. I guess I should study chemistry a little bit more. I was a physics major, or I should say if a uh, pilot for my first time through college and a communication major my second time through college. So yeah, I could have had two degrees and I don't. All right, so there's nothing in that direction. Now your shield recharges at a disgusting rate. Disgusting rate. Carbon is gonna be one of the most important things that you can start to gather on the way back and you don't have to stop walking. You can just you don't have to stop walking, yet I did. Okay, don't listen to me, folks. I see some in the... I see a little bit of sodium up ahead. I see some more down there. And I'm probably going to see some more in other places, so I'm not going to worry about that. This over here is some stuff that actually can make us go further. So let's see if I can utilize this to make us go a little bit further. Yeah, we had we had a surge that I didn't really maneuver too well with. I gotta I gotta learn this game again. I had that on when I was playing the first couple of times, but really getting that down is going to be important. All right. Now I did see car um, some sodium over here. I know it was over here. We're just kind of a little bit, it looks like. But I do have the ability to make a battery, and I'll show you how to do that. Just go here. Oh, I don't. I need more ferrite dust. T turns on your light, folks. So we're going to need ferrite dust for what we need. Alright, and ferrite dust is going to be able to give us a battery that's going to be able to recharge our thermal protection. So now I can make that ion battery and I can go into here and get a little bit more out of it. and. Like I said, I need carbon because we're going to run out in a couple seconds. Yep. And it takes forever for your first one of your scanners to recharge. It's kind of unnaturally long. Like a scanner has to have a little wind-up rubber band that you have to you know, wind every time you want to use it. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I still... D there, I, there I go. I have no idea. I have lots of oxygen on this planet, I'll tell you that much. All tied up in these evil plants. I know, what did the plant do to me? Alright, let's... Oh, there we are. We're home. And we're off the planet right now in a record amount of time. I don't think we found life here, or I looked for life here. So we're going to take this. Now we're going to take this. Pure ferrite. Put it in here. Take this and jump in the ship. All right. So now we have the pure ferrite to fix this. And we have... 
their hermetic seal to fix that. Pretty good, right? Now all we have to do is take off. We're done. That was my little bit of a speed run, and let's go and get to the next beginning part of, well, let's go get to the beginning part of the next quest, and I'm going to show you some things that you can do to make things a little bit easier for that, too. All right. Next steps. Get into space. You can see our thermal protection is going up very slowly. I, I, I don't know why it goes up so slow. All right, we're in space. Okay, we're in space. No, we're not in space. We have to see... Um, we'll know when we're in space. When we're in space... Oh yeah, we have to be in space. No, no, not yet. We're not where I want to be. There we go. That's where I want to be. In the asteroid field. That's where I want to be to test this out. Because in the asteroid field, I am going to try to lure somebody into attacking me. That's why finding that gold was very uh, very impressive. Why I wanted it so much. And the reason why I want somebody to uh, attack me is that the pirates almost always have the same thing on them. And that's uh, chromatic metal. And it's going to be important for the next one of our... That's going to be important for the next one of our missions. You'll see that in the next episode. But for now, I just want to get somebody to attack me. We're going to get that done in just a few seconds. Oh, I know what we have to do. We have to do that, and then that. And then we can get this. Incoming mission, uh, incoming transmission. And you see the 16, 16, 16, identify yourself. And it says you are not, I guess, the only one alone. Follow the yellow brick road. The broadcast ends as strangely as it began. It gave me some coordinates. Well, we're not going to go to the coordinates just yet. We are going to end going to those coordinates. But we are going to hang out over here, blow some things up, and try to attract attention of a couple of bad guys. And I think the more you kill, the better that will be. Now, you'll notice that we're getting a couple of nuggets and some other things in here. So the gold nugget just gives you more gold. And at this point, we have gold in the exosuit. You see how much we got, right? We got a ton of gold. All right, hostile scan. We got what we were looking for. All right, we got a lot of gold. Right, let's see where they are. Oh, there they are. Now, they're going to own me for a couple of seconds. No, it's only one. We might want to stay around for two because I want enough chromatic metal that I don't want to have. I don't have to worry about things. So we might get our first milestone. We might wind up killing about five of these guys, but it's important. There, and let's see if it does what I want it to do, which is chromatic metal. We got out of that 49 chromatic metal. We need about 100 to 150 chromatic metal. So we're going to try to stay out here and get them to spawn again. Alright, looks like we have more than enough stuff. We've mined for quite a bit and we're not going to get any kind of a pirate to proc one more time. Which I was hoping would happen. Because if we could have gotten them to proc one more time, we could have gotten enough of the chromatic metal, not to worry about having to find any on the planet that we're going to. And I don't know what Heimel planet means, so we're going to just go and see what that means. And we'll be there in a second. The good news is we'll probably be able to make our uh, make our habitat real quick. But Heimel planet, I think it's going to be some kind of frozen over planet. I don't know why it's showing us green areas and stuff. Maybe Heimel planet is Snowball Earth. Minutes. Oh, we're getting down there pretty quick. And we're going to back off. Try to, oh, nice cave systems. 
It's good for building in, if you ask me. And of course they give us... Um, really? Really? That was the place you wanted to... choose to... I don't know what the hell just happened. Please, none of you be predators. Alright, so I'm going to go over here just in case there's some oxygen or something that will replenish my health. Doesn't look it. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any boxes or anything over here. Nothing. Alright. Usually there's something. So essentially this is going to come up and it's going to tell us that we have to make a terrain manipulator. And it's going to tell us to make a... Come on, come on and tell me. Base computer. That's our plans and that's it. So now we have our marching orders. We have to create a base on this planet. We have to get back up there by the way. That's going to be more than interesting. Oh, there's a nice little cave over there. There are sentinels here, like I said. Alright, that's good enough. I'll stay right here for a second. A ship is over here somewhere, right? Our ship is right there. We can get some scans. We're very close to our ship. Get the most important scans done. We'll look around for life. You get more credit for life than anything else. Look around in the skies. You might see something. There are... Oh, wow. There's lots of good stuff here. You know, we're kind of stuck here, but there's ships going over all the time. You figure one of them would see us stranded here and, like, help out, right? But then again, we don't know where we are, who we are. We might be a little bit uh, weary of who we meet. All right, and what I want to do is just two things real quick. And it's going to be to... Close out this episode on a high note. And we're going to do that in just a second. We're going to do it this way, all right? So the first thing is we have to make this multi-tool, all right? So we put this in here, and that's what we need. So we need dihydrogen jelly, and we need carbon nanotubes. Now, you know I've been trying to pick up as much of that carbon as I could. And the dihydrogen jelly is from the dihydrogen. So we should be able to put this thing together now. But we need two of the tubes, not one. And now we have that. Okay, it's still going to keep on telling us to make it. We got it done. Next thing I needed was that metal plate I made before. Did I use it already? I used it already. So this is our metal plate. Come on, make the metal plate. Make the launch fuel. All right, we can recharge our launch thrusters, recharge that. All right, let's go look for a flat place to build in. I don't want to be too far from here because there'll probably be stuff around here that we can use. So I'm thinking right over on this little rise, this little plateau. Is there seems to be some sodium that's spawning over here. There seems to be some a lot of ferrite dust. There are some animals, and there's also going to be some uh, carbon, condensed carbon that we're going to need that will spawn over here. So having this as a initial base is going to be decent. It's not going to be perfect. One of the cool things about the rocks on these cold planets is that they normally are going to contain dioxide. Dioxide is a wonderful replacement for just regular oxygen. It's actually two oxygen atoms, I believe. 
um, two oxygen atoms or two oxygen mo molecules, whatever it is. Um, it's pretty decent and it gets you filled up rather quickly. And sodium is an actual living plant which will give you a little bit more. There we go. I did see some kind of cool stuff up there. We'll go up there in a second, but for now, this little area right here is going to be where I want to build. So, we do have more than enough to make this one piece right here. We are going to need more. So, I want to do, I want probably want to put it up by the ship over here. And I'll build down below it. Okay. Now, the minute we start to build, we're going to have some issues. They're going to try to kill us again with another storm. And that should take us to the end of this first episode. Once we build that first four by uh, two by two shack, that we will learn to call home. All right. And it's going to dump us a whole bunch of stuff. Now copper is going to be not important till after we get through this. But we are going to need to worry about our our thermal protection. I think I have enough to do what I have to do. We'll leave that one over there. We'll clear some of these rocks and then we'll come back out. I just want to get as much of this cleared because you don't really get credit for it if you don't get it. And you'll notice that all these rocks actually have sodium in them, which is a good deal because you're getting two for the price of one, just like I said before, when you were getting carbon and ferrite dust out of things, now you're getting sodium and ferrite dust. So. Felicium and Mordite I know are going to be important later, and so is Selenium, but it's not important to me for a little bit. And yes, I could sell these, but I'm going to need to have enough room to fill up on these on the next episode, so we'll deal with that then. Condensed carbon, carbon, I think I have more than enough to make a place, but I want to be 100% sure, and I'm not 100% sure right now, so without being 100% sure... Definitely have to get rid of some of this. And what's going to happen is that I'm going to clear an area, which would have been cleared anyway by itself. Usually there's a uh, storm that, that spawns right around now. All right, we got that. And we got that. And we got that. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spawn this. I'm going to build this right here. All right, so as soon as we start building. So we want to build right there, right there, right there, right there. Okay, that's good. See, as soon as we started building. So what I'm going to tell you is just so you can get through this all right, just do what I do. One, two, three, four. Then go right up to these. And now you should be fine in here. And now if you have any wood left, you can actually finish it out. And of course, we're going to have this one right over there. And we don't have enough. But you're inside. And you could actually, if you pointed in the right direction, which I strategically didn't have to worry about because there were trees everywhere over here. You should be able to point yourself in multiple directions. Now you could use the roofs for this. I just make a regular box because I don't want to uh, waste a lot of the materials that we have. You are going to need magnetized ferrite for one of the things that you're going to build. The good news is we don't have to worry much about the bad guys, which are our sentinel buddies, when we do this. Oh, so if you make a mistake like that, just hold down the control button and you should be fine. So this one has to go here and then 
that one. And then this one and spin it around. And then, of course, I'm going to put in my portable stuff, and we should be fine. And I'm going to start making that magnetized ferrite. We had the purifier ferrite over here, but I'm going to put some more of this in there. I'm going to use the condensed carbon because the other carbon is going to be important for things. Um, but that should be it. The next thing that we have to make after we talk to the base computer is going to be... Let's get over here. Accessing log, additional archives, entry follows, da da da. Really good, long thing, salvage data, subterranean devices. Okay, we have to get this extractor. It's an extractor of plans. Now there is some tidying up of this place that I can do along this side over here. And it depends on who you are and what you want to do, but I might fill that in one of two ways. I'll either use my terrain manipulator and add it in that direction, or I'll just... Oh, we do have that right there. I'm looking to see if there's any more life over here. There's no life, which is alright. That's being made. Let's see what it takes to make this extractor. One carbon nanotube. We might need to make a carbon nanotube. We did. And then all that pure all that pure ferrite that we just made, it's going to turn into magnetized ferrite. And then we'll be done. Guys, I hope you really, really, really like this episode because I, I love this. I, I love playing this game. This game has been one of my favorite exploration type games, survival type games in... I don't know why I stopped playing it. I think I got caught up in some other games is why I stopped playing it. And that happens to me from time to time. I'll start playing one, and then I'll stop playing it because I move on to something else. But I snuck into this game a lot on my own, and I find that every time I play, I, I find myself getting lost in just exploring the whole world, the whole universe that is the... Uh, that is the No Man's Sky universe. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about multiple things right now because I have something else that I have on my mind. And that's uh, a Star Citizen. I've got to get a Star Citizen video out. And now that my computer's back together again, and if only, uh, if only the people over at Corsair would please send me my side panel, that would be great. That way I wouldn't have to hear the fans so loud over here in my ear. I keep on thinking that you're hearing it. That's why I... Uh, I keep stopping, but then I pull my earphone up and I realize it's not very loud at all. So, we are going to complete this episode by walking in here, grabbing onto the... Oh god, it's kind of like a daylight basement, if you think about it. I'm, I'm from Georgia, and a lot of the basements like this, they're built up on one side, and then on the other side they are daylight. So, pretty cool. All right, so we have to do this, and this is the end of the episode. I said we were doing kind of a speed run. We did kind of a speed run. Not a real speed run, but kind of a speed run. And the only thing that didn't work out for me, which I hope I edit out for you, is the fact that I didn't get more of those pirates to spawn. If you can get more pirates to spawn, you can get between two and 500 uh, chromatic metal pretty fast. And that's the easiest way to get chromatic metal in the beginning because you're really going to be fighting in these very bad, bad, bad places. All right, on the next episode, we're going to have to go dig up a bunch of technology out there. We'll probably start getting a few more of these life forms and other things out here scanned to make a couple of more dollars. And then we'll continue on with this wonderful, wonderful tutorial. And... Uh, 
as soon as that's done, we can start moving into other things like exploration, base building, and completing a bunch of the different... Well, I, I think there's three different storylines at this point, so we'll complete the storylines as as efficiently as we can. I'm not going to say quickly because I really like to savor my time in No Man's Sky, and I hope that you enjoy that too. So if you like the episode, please click the thumbs up button below. If you do subscribe, please click on the notification icon. That way you get notified of most of the videos as they go up. Because of the way that YouTube's new algorithms work, you might not be notified of all of them. And if you want to be notified of more of my videos, you can go into the video description and follow me on Twitter and Facebook and eventually Instagram also. And that way you'll be notified of not just my videos, but other things that are going in my life, like what I'm doing at CitizenCon when that comes up. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.